All right, future sign painters, we're going to do one from start to finish. We've got a design here that we have printed onto a piece of transparency material. You can do this with your inkjet printer. Go to Staples, go to go to one of the uh, supply houses, uh, office supply houses, they'll make you one. Find you one of these at a school surplus, something like that. This is an overhead projector. Do that. And we have art. Right there. Now, there's a... Uh, warn you ahead of time that this becomes a lot of fun to play with and will waste a lot of your time. Um, there's a very famous cartoon of the sign painter working over there on the easel and a fly lands on the projector and the poor guy dies of a heart attack. So be ready for that. This happened to me before. Malls, things like that, working in the shop at night. Um, they will startle you. Roll out your piece of paper on the uh, easel and uh, trace this artwork just with a pencil, just like grade school. Okay, we've got the paper up. We've got a pencil sketch of what we're doing. This easel here is uh, drywall, faced with drywall. So you got a soft surface for your pounce wheel to dig into. This little wheel right here, a lot of little teeth on it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. That's what you're doing. You're tracing, you're tracing with this wheel to make little, little tiny holes in the paper, just like that. That's all there is to it. Okay, how that pounce wheel works is you're poking holes in the paper, just over and over little holes. And the only downside to that is once you start to use it on the back side of it, you can close that hole right up. So what you want to do, turn your pattern over, get you some fairly coarse sandpaper, sand over the back side of that to get rid of those little nibs so the hole stays open. Now we got the pattern turned over. Okay, this is what you call a pounce bag. It is a scrap of cloth, a sock, anything like that. Give a little piece of cloth inside to uh, act as a weight. A little charcoal powder, rubber band, you got yourself a pounce bag. And what you are doing, is you've got your pattern laid down, it's got little holes poked in it, and you're gonna go over the whole thing like this. And this transfers the charcoal through the little holes and marks on your panel or whatever it is you're lettering where you want the letters to be, the stripes to be, what have you. Okay, we are using Ronan today, very good product, see if you can't find it in your area. Um, for this uh, background color, we're going to cut in I'm using some bright red, 
and uh, adding a little imitation gold to it to help it cover and give it a little bit brighter brighter touch of orange to it. Um, got a little secret goo. This is uh, some uh, chromatic edge. I bought some a long time ago. I was mentioned in my other video. I've still got a little bit. It only takes a little. Helps it flow a bit. Um, any of the reds outdoors nowadays, unless you're using a water-based paint, uh, the stuff fades real quickly. You may want to add some uh, automotive type hardener. Um, or some of the brand name that goes with it. Uh, just about everybody makes a hardener now. Just a couple of drops. Um, and do not allow the hardener to get into the uh, virgin stuff here because the whole thing will get uh, ruined. So we're just adding a little touch. We'll go just a little tiny bit and that's plenty mixed thoroughly and you can go to the art stores and get all kinds of cool little mixing tubs and this that and the other but these work fine make sure and wash them good you don't want any oil uh, greasy food stuff getting in your paint but other than that you're good to go okay for cutting in we're going to use a lettering flat um, these are great the old timers will tell you that uh, uh, at least back when we were doing this, everything was still done by hand. Uh, speed, of course, the faster you got done, the more work you could do in a day, the more money you made. So a flat, uh, you could do some truck lettering with a flat and really get some speed. Now, they're a whole different animal from the quills, um, but uh, it's like anything else. Once you, uh, once you get used to them, uh, it's a great tool. Um, clean this out in some mineral spirits. Um, because uh, at least using oil based paints you clean these things thoroughly when you get done and you put a little oil in them and work it into the heel uh, it keeps the hair supple um, motor oil, lard oil, there's all kinds of specialty oils for it uh, just something that's not going to dry out you get them done and lay them out flat alright one of the first things you want to do is work the paint in good and I'm using the side of the little tub here and you want to work it on a flat surface palette it out a little bit because there's going to be there's going to be a lot of gooey still down in the heel of this it's going to affect your paint um, so you want to go ahead and work a little of that out try to get it all consistent just like this now, the drywall is a little absorbent to do this um, one of the guys I used to work for always had a calendar um, glossy calendar hanging on the wall and he would work his brush on that. Uh, magazine, um, yellow pages are always good. Um, yellow pages make good palettes by the way if you get into pinstriping those are always handy. And you're ready. Now with any job like this you're looking to do just a smooth coating of paint. You know, you're not getting real fancy. Uh, this is uh, all going to get cut in with a black shade. So we're applying material uh, quickly and efficiently, keeping a wet edge. So you lay it down, float it out, lay it down, float it out, lay it down, float it out. And uh, you want to work fairly quickly. As I say, you want to keep a wet edge.
All right, we're done with this flat. Thoroughly, but gently, clean it in some mineral spirits. I've got a can of oil here. I've been using this same can for absolutely ever. Suddenly it's been forever. I used to didn't be this old. Okay, pallet to brush. And this is the way I was always taught to store them. Just, uh, I've got a raised edge on this, about as thick as a yardstick. You can use a yardstick on a flat piece of metal if you want. But uh, it keeps the brushes kind of in shape. It's the way I was always taught to do it. Um, other folks use brush boxes, nothing matter with that. But it's just the way we've always done it. Alright, we're adding some stripes to the background. I took the same background red that already had a little hardener in it. Um, for this, we're kind of going with an old-fashioned color so that uh, bright red, we're adding some uh, imitation gold to it to get the correct color of orange. Um, I've got me a quill that's been modified a little bit as a liner, or you could use a liner. Now, this is an old trick, take a yardstick. This is called dragging a line. I'll have to be super clean here at the edges because that's going to get covered up with uh, the black drop shadow. Black will be the last thing to go on. So you can cheat a little bit. You set the, the heel of the brush here against the uh, yardstick. Just use it like a tool. Squash the brush all the way down. Let the brush's character show up. So I'm going to squash it all the way down to the heel. Alright, so we got all the stripes laid. And like I say, it's a little rough around some of the edges, but all that's going to get covered up with the black drop shade. Okay, these letters are going to be uh, prismatic, which means we're going to have a, uh, what seems to be a carved letter. Um, I'm taking a, a blue stabilo here. It's cold weather, so I can use one of these. And you mark your your centers of the letters. And figure your angles, you know, where is your light going to come from? 
and what's going to be your shade side. All right, and the gray for that uh, prismatic lettering, I've got a non-waxed bathroom cup. Started with a little white. I got a few drops of just about every color we used on this, plus a little bit of silver. And uh, just a drop of black gives you a nice middle of the road silver gray color. Uh, it's going to be a good shade for these letters. And we're laying, working on laying down. It's a vertical sign. Um, for this particular job, I like I like them laying down. Okay, one trick for doing a two-sided sign like this one without having to wait for each side to dry is uh, push pins, just like this one. They make a little tiny hole, a little tiny hole, but you can fill in with paint. I've got these every couple of feet, and that keeps it standing off. I've got these two-by scraps, so it keeps the one side floating. So you can work on two sides at a time. All right, this is another old school trick, or at least something I learned from one of the guys that I worked under for a lot of years, back when everything was still hand lettered. <clears throat> I don't go to this kind of trouble very much anymore. I usually use the uh, the uh, bathroom cups, the non wax bathroom cups, to mix my paint in. But um, soup can, any kind of can like that. You go to cut the lid, leave a wide spot, fold it back, and you have a built in paint can with a pallet on the top. The excess paint drips back down in here. You don't lose anything. It's really it's really handy, especially for a longer job. Um, you can hold your uh, mall stick and this can uh, with one hand, work with the other. And it's really handy. I've got a mall stick. If you saw the other one, uh, you know that what this is. Um, if you didn't, uh, you go to the hardware store or the hobby store, you get you a half inch wooden dowel. Um, that's a rubber crutch tip. Um, you can uh, uh, use uh, duct tape or masking tape, things like that also on the end, but it's nice to have something where it's not going to slide around once it touches the surface. Okay. Now we're going to paint in the outline and drop shade. Got a gray quill here. Decide to lose a hair. Here we go. The rest of the job you didn't have to be as tight with um, the overruns and things like that are going to get covered up by the this drop shadow and outline. So this is the point where you stop and uh, try to do a real clean job because this is going to be what makes or breaks the entire thing. You can see that I'm holding the brush way back. I've, I've mentioned this kind of thing before. Um, the 
brush is a tool just like a chisel or any other tool. Um, it is a hand tool and uh, it's designed to work this way. You can't hold it like a pencil and uh, get anything done. You need to let the character of the brush come through. You want to back way off and let the brush work for you. By the night you're going to be working against the brush and it's not going to do you any good. A lot of the stuff you figure out as you go, you know, some of the stuff I'll tell you won't make sense until you've done it quite a while. But like I always say, this kind of thing here is a, it's an acquired talent. Um, you may be artistic, you may be apt to be able to design well, uh, that is a gift. Um, but knowing the mechanics, the brush mechanics, of lettering or calligraphy or any of that is an acquired talent. You may have an aptitude for it and that's great, you get a head start, but uh, nothing beats doing it over and over and learning how to do it. Um, it's just part of it. So it's like tying your shoes. You do anything four million times, you get pretty good at it. Um, you just have to keep doing it. This kind of thing uh, will not happen overnight. It's a long time to get proficient at it. I'm twisting the brush into the corners. Um, we'll do a video one day of uh, just straight ahead lettering. But, uh, this is the job that was in the shop today. I don't do a whole lot of just regular lettering anymore, but we will do a regular, just a panel, just to, just to be doing it. And we'll talk about how to form some of those letters. with the brush, we're not squashing it all the way down to the heel, you know, not uh, the heel of the brush isn't touching the board. There's a little turn to the brush here turn it between your fingers to get that little corner point. Did I do the wrong place? It's up here. Just like that. As you're learning to do this, you're going to think that you're Knuckles are going to be black and blue the next day from twisting this brush. It's a doesn't sound like much till you do it for a few hours. Always try to flow out. You know, you're placing, you're placing paint, you're placing material, and you want it all to be nice and smooth when you get done. So uh, use the tip of the brush, kind of float out the paint so it's nice and smooth. So you get almost a screen printed appearance. One of the one of the great uh, great brush mechanics I worked under. 
Wimpy Cantrell out of Woodstock, Georgia. This stuff always looked like it was screen printed when he got finished. There were no brush marks or you know, outlining and going back and refilling. You filled as you went. Kept a wet edge the whole time and uh, it made a very clean looking job. Very clean. Keep an eye on the tip of your mall stick. Try to keep it out of the wet paint. I just did this gray, so you don't want to smear it around. You can see how great these uh, bean cans are for for paint. You got a built-in palette, and it's easy to hold with your mall stick. It makes for a fun job. And there's uh, different schools of thought on the lettering. I know a lot of guys that uh, I worked for. One of the guys that would have a can of paint and a can of thinner and a palette and he would dip from one to the other and mix the paint as he was lettering and uh, I know a lot of guys that are real good that do that um, and I've done a little of it myself but um, there's something about um, there's something about having the paint pre-mixed the way you want it every time you go to the board with the brush you get the same reaction there's a lot to be said for that um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, you picked up a little too much paint that time that you dipped or a little too much thinner that time that you dipped and you got a little bit different reaction off of the brush. This way it's always consistent. Um, no time wasted. Um, a lot to be said for that. Especially, you know, when you were doing this and this is how you made your living. The sooner, looks like the sooner you got done, the sooner you got on to the next job more money you made. So uh, it was all about how to do a job crisply and cleanly with as much speed as possible because that's where the money was. Uh, especially in the days right before I got to it, uh, you'd be a journeyman painter and uh, it was a percentage. And you'd make a, a really large percentage of every sign that went out the door. Um, it was a split. Uh, the shop would furnish all the materials in a place to work and you would show up with your brushes and uh, work the day and however many signs you lettered you got a percentage of the sales price and you could make a really good living uh, back in those days if you had the speed and of course did clean work It's a little harder nowadays to see the folks that have just jumped in, you know, back in the day, if you were somebody that was kind of a kind of a, a, a jack leg, so to speak, and just coming in doing stuff cheap and undercutting the competition, um, which was common. Uh, the signs usually reflected it. You know, you'd have. Uh, uh, somebody that didn't really know how to run a brush and uh, you'd have the, a sign that basically said that um, nowadays the machines cut the letters so perfectly it's hard for most folks to tell I mean the, the letters are perfect so um, you know now the sign may be hideous but the letters are perfect so it's harder to pinpoint why you don't like it I'm going to finish this up cutting everything in here uh, 
I'll go ahead and paint this in black and uh, I'll come in later and letter the address on it. I've got a number 14 jumbo quill. I really like these. Um, I like the way they react. And this is a gray jumbo. I like littering with these. Uh, a lot of uh, casual letter styles you can do with a large jumbo like this. I just like the way they react. They have a lot of paint. You see where I'm holding it now. I know I keep preaching on that. Hold the brush back. You can't hold it like a pencil. Let this thing work for you a little bit. And instead of taping off, instead of running tape where the, uh, the blue and the black go together, um, you use your hand like a tool. You grab this edge right here with a finger, lock your hand together, leave plenty of length, let the hairs be the shock absorber. Now I've got a, I got a reference line drawn on here, but this is how you do it. like that and work as you go keeping it wet so you end up with a you know you're keeping your wet edge you have a nice even coat of paint you don't want to run this line and come back around and try to fill everything in because if your line dries you will see the difference you don't want that next July Citizens in Metro Atlanta will consider a transportation referendum that funds over 100 transportation projects. The plan requires strict accountability, a citizen's oversight committee, and annual audits to ensure projects are completed on time and on budget. Tens of thousands of Metro Atlanta residents participated in a process to select projects with the goal of reducing traffic, creating jobs, and improving our quality of life. Voters will decide if this transportation plan is needed in our region. To learn about the transportation referendum by visiting www.transformmetroatlanta.com. Paid for by Metro Atlanta Voter Education Network. This is the sound of someone paying their babysitter when they've run out of cash. Can't seem to find my checkbook anywhere, so um, here's 14 quarters, a brand new fondue set, and a greatest hits of the 60s 8-track tape. You don't mind, do you? This is the sound of a Chase checking customer paying their babysitter when they've run out of cash. Okay, I just sent the money to you with my smartphone. Are you free on Thursday night? With Chase Person to Person Quick Pay, you can use your computer or smartphone to send money as easily as sending an email. Type in the person's email address or mobile number and the exact amount you want to send, and click. No fees, no sharing account. This is the sound of a babysitter getting paid with Chase Quick Pay. That's unbelievable. This is the sound of a babysitter getting paid with an 8-track tape from the 60s. That's unbelievable. Chase Quick Pay. Take a step forward. And Chase, what matters? In the winter park, buffers in the middle of the county camp, all the women's and Chase checking camp, rest from the alerts, we search for the right now, and Chase begin in the middle of Chase. Allen Vigil, still Ford Truck Headquarters, right now, get a 2011 Ford F-150 XLT truck equipped, not stripped, at a full 10 grand off, stock number S-5776, MSRP of 37710, buy it now for only 27710, plus tax, tag, title, there's never any bait and switch in Allen Vigil, even 40 more there to choose from, don't buy any. Anywhere else, go to Allen Vigil Ford Lincoln, Monroe, Fayetteville, online at VigilFord.com. That's VigilFord.com. We're to watch across North Georgia. I'm Dallas Washington News Meteorologist Brad Nitz. Severe Weather Team 2 is tracking this system as it moves into our area. Heavy rain, hail, and even the possibility... Just for fun, we're going to do it the way we used to do it. Yardstick, white stabilo. You know, way back in the day, this is the way you would have done it. You drug a line. Be very careful not to let it tip. Keep this perpendicular. So you get a nice straight line. 
top and bottom line of your copy. You do a skeleton outline. Um, which is just an indication of letter placement. This doesn't have anything to do with necessarily how they look. We're not going to trouble of a pattern. Like in the day, if it was kind of a knockout sign, this is just the way you'd do it. Um, you'd give indication just for letter location. That's all it would be. Now, you know, you could get away with this after doing it for a long time because you already know um, letter forms and proper proper forming of letters and such as that, um, you know, always use a pattern to begin with um, because uh, it's, uh, um, you can't just pull this stuff out of your hand. This is after years of following patterns and all that sort of thing, but just to show you. The way we used to do it back in olden days, I'm move the printing down a little bit. Alright, I'm sitting on my handy dandy three-way adjustable Coca-Cola crate. Probably the last one in existence. Um, got my bathroom cup. Non-waxed. Very important. This is a number six gray quill. This is a Mac. Mac makes a very good product. Not just striping brushes. They're very good. There's been a little bit of some different colors dripped into this to gray it down a bit. Some other job, other colors that we were using on this job. Sounds real romantic, but you know, a couple of hundred no parking signs. Um, they kind of take the fun right out of it. And it all sounds fun, and it is fun to do. It's good therapy to pull out a brush and form some letters every now and then. But uh, new technology is it's handy. You need to know that for an R to appear balanced on the line, how it needs to be, that this leg needs to come out just past this. If it's short, it feels it visually it looks like the R is going to fall over on its face. Little things like that that you learn. After a long time, you can just whoop them out like this. But, you know, you'll do this out of vinyl. It's ridiculous to do letters like this with a brush. This is just, I'd say, just for fun. And this particular customer is excited about having one done by hand.
two letters together that are the same, you know, two E's, especially two O's or two S's. This kind of thing used to drive you crazy when you were learning how to do this because you didn't seem like you could make two just alike. It would drive you crazy. S's and O's, O's and zeros, eights, threes, everything with the rounded. It's always tough, but especially O's. Old McIntyre is one of the guys I used to work for. Back when everything was still by hand. Old Wompy Jawed. There you go with those Wompy Jawed O's again.